hello everyone and welcome to black runner everything and welcome back to the channel and welcome to a match review of a game which barcelona actually won by four goals to neil kept a clean sheet and he scored four times and Lewandowski didn't even score that's just all weird really that stuff which hasn't been happening much this season or oh, everything except the Lewandowski not scoring often thing that's that's been happening a lot this season <laughs> but anyway it was a good change of pace and I think the kind of result that Barcelona need coming off of the back of that victory at Celta de Vigo as well as that performance away at Napoli which they deserve definitely to get more than a draw from so what happened here today I think was pretty pretty awesome and this is going to be a match of you so what that means is I'm going to talk you through the negatives and the positives from the performance as well as pick my man of the match and give you the manager and the team ratings okay so if this is your first time here please go ahead and um, hit that subscribe button it's going to be somewhere I think there and <laughs> hit the like button as well it should be somewhere down there okay all right so let's go ahead and talk negatives and Man, I had to be really nitpicky with the negatives because, to be honest, feels a bit spoiled considering the kind of season we are having to be finding negatives in a 4 0 win at home where the opposition almost created, you know, no significant chances. But I did find one because, you know, I'm a nitpicker, that's what I do. And the negative I'm going to go with here was just that loss of control again because. As usually is the case with Barcelona, they never seem to just have control of a match properly. You know, like even within 45 minutes, they're going to lose control of the game for like 10 to 15 minutes. And it's usually during that 10 to 15 minutes that there is chaos and, you know, mistakes that lead to goals being conceded. This time around, of course, there were some mistakes, but there were no goals conceded. Thankfully, Ter Stegen kept a clean sheet. This was Barca's first clean sheet in the league since, what, I think that also swimming game, which now that I put it that, that way, it's not very far away since the last clean sheet, but there haven't been many, trust me. Okay, so it was good to see Ter Stegen keep himself a clean sheet. Okay, we're done with the negatives. Let's talk positives. And the first positive, I should say, has to just be, I guess, the the wingers. The game today from both João Felix and Rafinha was, I would say, at least what you expect to see from both of them. Of course, Rafinha could have easily have had a hat trick by halftime, but you know, it's this season, and as a Barcelona player, you know they're not doing that very often this season. You know, we've only had one hat trick. That was by Ferran, and before that, it's, it's a long time since the last hat trick. Before that. Because Barca's players just don't seem to be that clinical and Rafinha did have some moments during that first half, like I said, where he was just not clinical enough and, you know, can't forget about that break right towards the end of the first half where he plays a heavy ball into Jao Felix. But I think he kind of made up for that in the second half. Firstly, with that pass to Christensen, you know, lovely way to not pass into Christensen, who then had a very easy job of laying it off to Jao Felix, who was wide and marked for him to score. But also, um, there was the assist, of course, for the third goal Barcelona scored. Again, that just was completely down to Rafinha. And, you know, playing well and giving the ball up to Frankie de Jong, who had, you know, an easy job as well. And at which point, I will get into probably my second positive from this, which was the performance from the midfield. And, like, this season, I think there's been a lot of criticism that's been thrown around this Barca team. Okay, let's get that clear okay so it's not like the guys I'm about to mention are the only players who've caught criticism but I think that the most unfairly criticized players Barcelona have had this season have been their midfielders because aside from Oriol Romeo I think everybody else has just about done well most of the time okay it's only when they don't do well that's when Barcelona suffers and this was a case here where Gundogan and Frankie and in this case, we're throwing Christensen, right? And you know, all of these guys, Fermin as well, coming on as a late sub and grabbing that goal for the fourth one. All of these guys just have been good the past the past month, I would say, maybe since about Villarreal. The midfielders really have been good. And it's a shame that they get criticized because people always nitpick, you know, they'll show you one passage of play where maybe Frankie 
ran with the ball and you know it didn't result in a goal and everybody's like oh you know frankie passing the ball is faster than running with it and all that kind of stuff but you know what positives for me today the performances from the mid fielders and moving on from that we can talk team ratings and the manager rating and obviously when you win that well and you dominate the opposition that much it's harsh to give a team rating that's lower than an eight and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give an 8.5 in fact and really the rest of that 1.5 that's been left on the table is because Barcelona's forwards didn't finish all the chances they got okay it's nice to win 4-0 but I wouldn't mind winning 8-0 either you know it's a good look okay <laughs> and moving on from the team the manager rating well I think it's hard to give Xavi anything lower than a 9 probably this was a 10 as well because he did he did his job as a coach and he told the players exactly what they were supposed to do and in fact if there was one other nitpick i would have to throw into you know the negatives like if we went back just for a little bit to those negatives the number of times that jao felix and gundogan made runs in behind that high line of hetafe which by the way was a huge surprise for me because since when does borderlands play with the high line at least one that high first time I'm seeing that and um, this time around they did that and you know there was so many times during the first half Jao Felix Gunagan made that run over you know Rafinha as well made that run in behind and the ball wasn't being played by our center backs who all of whom are ball playing center backs you know it was weird for me and that's a nitpick which can go into the negatives but of course we did get basically all of our goals <laughs> because of those balls in behind that high line of Itafi. So I guess maybe we owe a lot more thanks here to Bordalas as well. More so than, you know, maybe Xavi being a genius or our players being spectacular. But either way, a win is a win. You only can beat what's in front of you. You can only face the tactics the opponents, you know, bring to the table. And with all of that taken into consideration, it was a good performance. Okay, let's talk man of the match. And man of the match here, I think, it has to be Rafinha. It would be unfair to give it to anybody else. Can't think of anybody else, really. Maybe apart from Frankie, who had a bigger bearing on how this game played out, you know, scoreboard-wise. But yeah, we're going to give it to Rafinha. Congratulations. Aside from that, let me know your thoughts. You know, what do you think of that performance? It's nice to win a match comfortably for a change, isn't it? It's nice to not have to worry about what's coming next as far as your opponent's results isn't it? Anywho, thank you for tuning in to have a great day and for Sabasa.